Uh, let us begin with your work as an editor for the journal Dushu. As I mentioned earlier, you served as the editor for Dushu for more than 10 years, from 1996 to 2007. Uh, at the time, Dushu was uh, arguably the most influential uh, literary journal in China. So tell us a bit about how the, the journal Dushu uh, started and what was the... Uh, uh, the initial ideas at the time of the creation of Dushu? Um, the Dushu magazine was published in uh, 1979, so it's uh, soon after the end of the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, that the, the first editors were the Chen Hanbo and Chen Yuan and the Fan Yong, the, the senior generation. So in the 80s, these uh, journal played some role for the public discussion and the political discussion. Uh, it's very uh, important the journal, and in the mid 80s, uh, a group of the young scholars organized the uh, the discussions on the Western philosophy, Western economics, or some other social theories. And I started uh, uh, to be the editor in 1996. So I served it until the 2007. Mm. That's the, uh, the basic background. Yes. And, and, and so by training, you, you are a, a literature specialist since you started working on Lushun. You are also someone who is very much interested uh, uh, in the field of philosophy. And as you mentioned, uh, Dushu initially was more uh, focusing on social sciences. So what drove you to be interested in, in becoming the editor uh, of, of, of Dushu? Uh, yes. Uh, generally speaking, in the uh, 80s, in 1980s, the most of the art essays uh, in Dushu magazine were the uh, from the humanities and mm -hmm. the literary figures. So generally speaking, it was thought as a literary and a humanist journal. Mm -hmm. But when I was there, I was the contributor since the uh, uh, 1980s, that mm -hmm. uh, as a young scholar, as a young intellectual. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, when I took the post of the editor, that uh, I think that the very important thing, because China is uh, was undergoing a long process of the great transformation, mm -hmm. so it is necessary to involving more the intellectuals from the field of the social sciences, mm -hmm. and to, together working together with the uh, scholars and the intellectuals from humanities mm -hmm. work, uh, for the public discussion. Uh, yeah. touching upon the, uh, the, the, uh, the urgent issues that China are facing. Mm -hmm. so, so when you started as, as an editor, did you have uh, a number of issues, a number of, of questions that uh, you, you, you wanted to have the journal uh, to, to address? I mean, uh, you know, what were the issues on which you wanted the, the, the journal to focus? Uh, generally speaking, we have different topics. It's broad everything almost, uh, from the, uh, the, the, the human history, literature, and, uh, and, uh, and world history, Chinese history, and other issues, as well as some social political issues. Mm -hmm. For example, we organized the discussion on a, like a historical issues, uh, archaeological, new archaeological discoveries, uh, the, the geographies, and the his, historical readings. All these issues try to reflect the, the new developments in our academic research. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we touch upon, for example, the agriculture, the crisis of agriculture, rural society, and the peasants. We also talk about the financial crisis. We talk about the anti-terror war and, uh, and, uh, and all these kind of the nationalism and the globalization and some other issues. Mm -hmm. So these are urgent issues we are facing 
for we we raise the issues for the public discussion and the intellectual discussion, as well as more specific. So it's it's covered a different kind of the topics. Mm -hmm. And 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 of course, there is a, there is a very long tradition of uh, of literary activity and of journals activity in China. You know, prior to. Um, the, 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 I mean, in the twenties, in the thirties, and then so when you when you took the editorship of the journal, I mean, did you have some uh, some uh, ideas of previous journals existing in China or previous journals from other parts of the world, you know, in in the U.S. or in in Europe, which you thought could be um, useful for you to 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 set up the editorial line of, uh, of Dushu? Yes. We did, uh, obviously, because there was, a, first of all, actually there was a tradition for these journals. Mm -hmm. In the 1980s, uh, there was a lot of the uh, reviews written by Chinese intellectuals on the Western workers. Mm -hmm. But now, after the 90s, there was a new condition that, uh, the first of all, it's uh, the interaction between Chinese intellectuals and the Western intellectuals was much more rich than before. This is the first condition. Mm -hmm. Second is that there was a massive translation of the, uh, the Western books into Chinese. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge about the Western knowledge was much richer than before. Mm -hmm. So what I did is try to make these public space, the journal, are uh, more international, which means that uh, we invited the intellectuals from the, uh, uh, the America, from the European countries, from Japan, from uh, the Korea and India, as well as the regions like uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong uh, for, the, for their contribution to our discussion. So we also organized a series of the debates and the discussion, face-to-face -face discussion at our editorial office concerning the topics that we are really uh, the commonly uh, uh, faced. So that's what I, the, the, one of the, uh, the, so we try to create a public space is a kind of, through this journal. And as that space became a, Crossing a cross border, yeah. a public yeah. space. Yeah. No, in, in fact, you know, because I, I had a chance uh, when I was in China last time to see the collection of, 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 of Dushu. And so through friends, uh, you know, I, I went through the, the, the magazine and, and what, what I found was striking was, first of all, it's, it was very, it is very, very pluridisciplinary. It is a bridge between yeah. Western and uh, Chinese scholarship. And it's a combination of scientific approach and cultural approach. Uh, yes, yes. We actually uh, invited the many uh, Western scholars, mm -hmm. as well as, as I said, that the scholars from other countries to join us. Yeah. So almost regularly, we organize the, the, the discussion and the debates. So this is, uh, I think, that our strategy, and mm -hmm. uh, because. The, the issues we are facing now, the, even the, like a financial crisis, nationalism, or the wars, and all these issues were not single, simply the Chinese issue, but the global issues. So that's why we try to work together to hear different voices, not only the different voices among Chinese intellectuals, but also the different voices among intellectuals from all of the world. Yeah. So, so, so you felt it was very important for uh, Chinese intellectual debates and public debates in, in, in China to really somehow be exposed to uh, international scholarship, international uh, uh, ideas. Why do you think it was so important for uh, public debates and intellectual debates in China to be, to be exposed or to, be, to, to, to learn about uh, intellectual uh, production coming from the West. Why did you feel it was important? Because the first of all, uh, intellectually speaking, we are we should open to any kind of intellectual tradition. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the, the we can learn from every every kind of the uh, intellectual tradition. This is the first. Mm-hmm. Second is that uh, now all these issues were really are uh, it cannot be simply defined as a Chinese issue, mm-hmm. and we also need to understand the, the the questions in China from a global perspective. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's why we are uh, we 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 organize. The, uh, debate in this way, mm-hmm. and uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, the major concerns were the uh, uh, the regional integration in in Asia. Mm-hmm. So we have to uh, uh, invite the scholars from Korea, from uh, uh, from Japan, as well as from Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other uh, places. We join together for this kind of discussion. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we realize that the uh, regional integration is a kind of the phenomenon in the age of globalization. Mm-hmm. So in that way, we also try to uh, organize the, the comparative studies between the, the same phenomena from China and from the uh, like uh, EU project. The, the, the regional integration projects in, in Europe. We try to compare that. Mm-hmm. So in that way, we also invited the scholars and, the, and the published their uh, the, 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 the articles and invite them to join our discussions. So mm-hmm. this is the, 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 the reason that the, we, we, we organize these debates in this way. Yeah, and, and, and so the, the, the second major characteristic that I see of Dushu is its pluridisciplinary disciplinary character. You know, you bring together history, sociology, economics, philosophy, literature, and in fact, you know, uh, in the West you hardly have any journal uh, which is so pluridisciplinary. You know, in, in America and Europe, you the journals very often are, are existing along academic discipline lines. So why did you feel that it was so important to bring all these disciplines together, to have historians, philosophers, economists, uh, literary critics, uh, uh, anthropologists talking to one another and being together in one place? Why was it so important? Uh, the first of all, um, I think that uh, there were many, many reasons, okay. Mm-hmm. The first of all, uh, the, a lot of Chinese intellectuals were curious about uh, what happening, what is happening in in the West, and uh, what's the, uh, the the reaction from Chinese uh, the, the Western intellectuals. Second is that the the, the style of Dushu magazine was, on the one hand, is uh, you can see that uh, in our modern Chinese intellectual tradition. Uh, you find that uh, from May Fourth moments, or the even earlier from Liang Qichao, Chen Duxiu, Hu Shi, Lu Xun, they all involve in the editorial jobs for the, mm-hmm. the publication of journals. All, most of these journals and the magazines were comprehensive. Mm-hmm. You can find a different kind of topics, different kind of disciplines that the scholars uh, from different disciplines involved in the discussion. So this is a modern Chinese intellectual tradition. At the same time, we, I, as I said, that uh, in the 80s, these journals were more or less uh, humanist or literary journals. Mm-hmm. But even for the Chinese literati in the, uh, the, the, the early Chinese history, they had the, the, uh, such a kind of the comprehensive perspective. Mm-hmm. At the same time, the, uh, all these urgent issues we are facing it's difficult. It's on the one hand, it's necessary to have special specialists involved in the discussion. But at the same time, we need a kind of the dialogue or the com- comprehensive debates. That's why we choose the the, the, the way the strategy to develop the, the, our discussion. Mm-hmm. No, and in fact, you know, you, in the West, I mean, in Europe, for instance, uh, you find very, very few journals who are really as disciplinary as uh, Dushu has been. And of course, you know, as a result, uh, you know, we, we, we have people from different disciplines down talking to, 
to not talking to one another. So, and, and then the third, the third characteristic of the show is the combination of uh, social critique and, and, and science. So clearly, in, in, in your approach, in the work of, 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 of Dushu, the scientific dimension is very important, you know, to, to really say things based on empirical evidence, on empirical reality. So why was it important, once again, to combine scientific approach and uh, uh, socially and politically critical approach? Yes. That's our that's our uh, real strategy, I think. Mm -hmm. the first of all, uh, the, the, the reason for this, we try to go beyond the, the, the division between the specialists and the, the public intellectuals. Mm -hmm. You know that the, the, uh, a lot of the so-called public intellectuals in, this, in these days were well, not really public intellectuals, but the media intellectuals. Mm -hmm. They have no, it's, they just play the professional media intellectuals role. They have no the real knowledge, and they didn't do the substantial research on the issues they are talking about. So this is the, the, the problem that we try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we, a lot of the scholars who focus on their own research, limited to their professional work, especially in the uh, universities or the, 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 the academies. So uh, it is necessary in order to have uh, qualified uh, discussions on these issues. On the one hand, you have to have those scholars from the specific fields, but at the same time, we need to ask them to engage in such a public issues together with some other scholars from their own perspective to contribute to the issue. So make that the issue more broad and the public. So this is our, uh, the, 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 we, so that's the, uh, the, our strategy. So most of the contributors for the Dojo magazine were uh, the scholars in certain fields. However, when they contribute, when they write for Dushu magazine, actually we ask them to write in a readable style, not that in the, in the, in the fashion of the academic journals. So on the one hand, which contain the, the high quality, the, the, the academic paper with high quality, but the style of that paper was not in the academic way, but the more readable. It looks like, a, reads like an essay. That's the, uh, the, our strategy. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you wanted to have the best of, of academia, the best of academic knowledge, scholarship and thinking made available uh, as widely as possible uh, so that you, know, you would be able to shape uh, intellectual debates, public debates beyond the university. Yes, because we want to address the more broad audience mm -hmm. and not limited to the, uh, if you know that the academic journal in the West, for example, in America or mm -hmm. other places, the mm -hmm. most of the journals only read by the, uh, the colleagues that, mm -hmm. the, the, from the same fields, those yes. colleagues, very limited. Mm -hmm. So what we want to have those scholars to address such a, uh, important issues addressed to the broad audience. Mm -hmm. To even we published uh, some uh, letters or the, some uh, the, the, the short essays as a responses to the, uh, the, the, the uh, those specialist articles. So mm -hmm. in order to have a real interaction, that's a real debate for us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it seems to me so that, you know, you had two types of goals in terms of uh, the strategy of, of Dushu. Uh, one was about intellectual and scholarly goals, and another one was about somehow um, social or political goals, in a way. Is it correct? Yes. And, and, and I think that uh, uh, going through the, 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 the issues, w what was... Uh, bringing these two goals together was 
concerns for social justice, economic justice, concerns for justice in general? Yes. Uh, for example, uh, it was from the Tuzu magazine, our discussion, that the, the, the crisis of agriculture, rural society, and the peasants, what we call the, the crisis of Sanlong, uh, were emerged and mm -hmm. then spread over to the public debates uh, in the mass media. And, uh, and then later, the, uh, the People's Congress and even the government make the responses to these debates to change their policy. Basically, we are talking about the, uh, the differentiation or the widening of the gap between the urban and the rural, so the, the, between the urban population and the, the, the peasants. So that's one of the issues. Mm -hmm. And also we talk about the, uh, the because in, in the, from the late 90s to the early years this century, that the, uh, China uh, were facing the serious challenge that uh, the collapse of the uh, social welfare system, especially its Medicare system. Mm -hmm. As you know that uh, in 2003, we had a very serious uh, SARS crisis. At that mm -hmm. time, in the rural area, for the peasants, simply have no any medical protection system. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we, we also highlight the, the, the injustice or the inequality in our society reflected in these fields. So we invite the scholars who are working on the social welfare system, Medicare system, on these issues, just like we invite the scholars from the agriculture studies mm -hmm. to talk about the, uh, the, 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 the divide between the urban and the rural and the crisis of agriculture. So that kind of discussion eventually uh, we attracted a lot of the participants for these de debates. They are not necessarily specialists in these fields. So on the one hand, it's all these kind of discussion uh, had a great impact in the, uh, on the uh, academic research on these fields, but at the same time, it's raised the public concern on these issues. So this is the, the case. Mm -hmm. And, and precisely, uh, uh, what was the circulation of Dushu? How many copies uh, sold uh, uh, per, 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 per issue? Uh, when I was the editor, generally speaking, it's between it's about the one hundred uh, thousands mm -hmm. to the high, highest level was the like uh, one hundred thirty thousands. Mm -hmm. So, so it's quite a bit. And precisely, you know, how how was it? Uh, how was Dushu received? I mean, um, in academic circles, in in policy circles. I mean, was Dushu viewed as a useful contributor or as a, as a critic of of of, um, uh, of of the system? How was it received? What was the impact of Dushu? Uh, generally speaking, Dushu was broadly. Uh, received as an intellectual public forum and mm -hmm. intellectual journal, mm -hmm. not the direct political journal. Mm -hmm. So we touch upon those political, economic, and social issues, urgent issues, but from a more or less intellectual perspective, rather mm -hmm. than, like, uh, for example, the, uh, we are not the think tank. Yes. We, are, we are trying to intellect, to all these things have the, the studies touching, on the one hand, as you said, it's a kind of scientific. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's a political. So we started from more scientific or intellectual perspective. Mm -hmm. So create a more independent space mm -hmm. for the public intellectual discussion. So this mm -hmm. is our strategy. Mm -hmm. So that, that because of this, the Dojo magazine had a great impact on the academic orientation, because we raised a lot of the issues, a lot of issues that uh, became the topic or that became the new orientation for the humanities and the social sciences. And many scholars have followed these uh, debates and the discussion in their own research. At the mm -hmm. same time, because we touch upon those very important uh, social political issues that the mass media sometimes also took over 
the, 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 the issues we are discussing for the more broad uh, debate and discussion. So that's the, the way through these kind of the mediation, sometimes some issues also received by the like a politicians or the like a governments. But we are, our discussion has no direct intention to give them the advices, for example. Uh, we, our strategy is trying to have a real public debate and a public discussion. The, the political consequence was follow that. It's not our direct intention. Mm -hmm. So that the most important thing is that for us, uh, in, in, in a society like China, it is very important to have a much more it's a real independent public intellectual space. Mm -hmm. That was because on the one hand, through that the space, you can touch upon many, many urgent issues, but mm -hmm. at, the, at the same time, remain that space as a space for the reflection. And so, including the intellectual reflection. Mm. So for you, what was what was in fact uh, the most important thing is to have uh, the possibility of creating a space for debate and of nourishing this space in an as open manner as possible. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That as the... open as possible, as yeah. reflexive as possible. Yeah. We had the, the very strong intellectual interest. Mm -hmm. At the same time, through that, uh, the, the, the efforts, we try to create the public uh, uh, the, the space for the discussion, touching upon different kind of the yeah. urgent social political issues, including the economic issues. Yeah. So the, 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 the possibility of debate was the real value that you were uh, trying to uh, celebrate and, and nurture? Yes. Yeah. You, That's you, true. You, yeah, yeah. You, you said that in, in, in Dushu you, you, you wanted to have somehow Western scholarship being featured and, and Chinese scholars learning more about the West. I mean, you know, so over all these years, I mean, you know, if you had two or three key ideas coming that, uh, from this Western scholarship that you featured in Dushu, what would be the key ideas which you think uh, were really important in terms of bringing them to to Chinese public debates. Uh, different kind of the different kind of the issues. The uh, for example, we need to uh, have a reflection on the uh, globalization. In that in that regards, we organize the discussion and the debates on the like international law. Uh, on the, the, the war and the, the, the problem with the uh, nation state and the sovereignty issues. Mm -hmm. And to talk, touch upon the, uh, the, the regional integration issues, civilization issues, local knowledge, and the public sphere, mm -hmm. as, as well as different kind of the trends we, mm -hmm. we, we in introduced and engaging for the d discussion. The most important thing is that, uh, on the one hand, we try to uh, introduce and review all these topics from the Western academia. And also, we are encouraged the negotiation between the Chinese knowledge and the Western knowledge. All the knowledge are from the uh, non-Western regions uh, uh, together. So that's mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, we try to do that. Mm -hmm. And, and so now you, you, you have left uh, Dushu for more than uh, three years. How do you reflect yes. on the intellectual life of, of, of the uh, 2000s? And do you think that intellectual life now in China has changed a little bit? Um, we are, the general situation, I think that's so much difference because we are, when I was the editor of Dushu, I... I think that uh, we are facing the two kind of the challenges. Mm -hmm. The one challenge is that the professionalism, mm -hmm. that because of the, the university establishment or the academic institutions, most of the uh, scholars limit themselves into, uh, to their own the, the fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you know that uh, the, these kind of the academic establishment encourage you to do so. You give, it, give you the funds, 
money and so on and so forth. So the, the people has no passion to engage in such a more broad and the public issues. That's the one uh, as one mm -hmm. aspect. On the other hand, is a uh, is another challenge from the uh, uh, the popular culture, especially mm -hmm. the mass media. The popular culture and the mass media made people a lot of you know the taste for the reading changed a lot because mm -hmm. they, the people feel not interested in more or less difficult issues, mm -hmm. and they less interested in the theoretical thinking. Mm -hmm. But without this kind of the academic research and the theoretical thinking, it's difficult to remain a reflective way for these issues. Mm -hmm. These are two challenges. Our approach, when I was the editor of the show, what we try is try to create or to continue our intellectual tradition. But now, these kind of the tradition was on the some, to some extent, is it really in crisis? Mm -hmm. Because now you look at the, uh, the intellectual life. Last year, it's difficult to find the same space like the uh, Dushu played in, in the Chinese intellectual life for the public discussion. Most of the, most uh, still have a lot of the uh, encounters, debates, and so on and so forth, mainly happened in the websites. Mm -hmm. However, the depth and the, the, the continuity of that discussion were quite uh, different because you followed the change. So you, you, you know that the, in the websites and the discussion, touching upon all those urgent issues, followed the, 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 like uh, the information, the news. It's, uh, not, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's still at the, it's necessary, but on the other hand, it really needs a kind of the more independent intellectual space. So that I think it's uh, we need to try again <laughs> to to create this the, this kind of the space. So it's uh, it's it, there were some other journals now, but uh, but it's difficult to to compare to the role of Du Shu played in the last decades. Yeah. Do you think that? Uh Part of the solution could be to have a, 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 an internet dushu, a dushu which would be a forum uh, for Chinese intellectuals, but also for intellectuals from the West on the net. I mean, do you think that, for instance, the idea of a world intellectual forum uh, could be a, a, a good idea? Yes, I think so. I think so. But uh, the difficulty is that... Uh, the, the language issue. Mm -hmm. well, even when I was the editor, we tried to do so. We tried to introduce something in to, to our Western audience, others. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not easy. That uh, the translation issue. The, this is the first. The second. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, there were different kind of intellectual tradition uh, from the uh, late 19th century down to the 20th century. Yeah, among the Chinese intellectuals, we have a long tradition to to study from the West, mm -hmm. and so uh, we uh, had a broad interest in what happened in the Western uh, world, and especially the, for intellectuals, what happened in the theoretical developments in the, like economics, sociology, anthropology, humanities, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, there were parallel the interest. Is it like in the non-Western uh, areas uh, from the in intellectual sites in the West. Now uh, I know that the more and more uh, developments in these uh, sites. But that proved the, the, uh, the necessity that uh, we need a kind of the joint program mm -hmm. for establishing a public space uh, mm -hmm. for the more broader discussion. As a matter of fact, uh, many several years ago, even during my uh, when I was the editor of Dushu, we worked together with some intellectuals from other society to create our, uh, the translingo journal, yes. which entitled the treatise. Mm -hmm. uh, we we published in Chinese, Korean, Japanese, as well as English, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but it's very, very, it's proved to be very difficult because of the translation issue, and also not easy to to have a proper editorial policy to mm-hmm. in order to attract the, the the audience from different societies. Mm-hmm. So that's the, uh, the, but but I think it's necessary. No, I, I think you are right because you see, we always talk about the globalization of the world. We talk about the fact that the, the societies are more, in, more and more interdependent, intertwined, and yet political discourse and very often, I mean, intellectual discourse and very often intellectual knowledge remains very national and very nationalized in the humanities, in the social sciences. So, in a way, we don't really have the kind of global space for debates and the kind of intellectual tools to think about the world uh, as globalized. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I think it's absolutely necessary. The, there were obviously now a lot of the uh, space, like a social world forum, they mm-hmm. are touch upon the issues in the third world countries, southern countries, south countries, especially mm-hmm. the African, Latin America, and the Asian countries, uh, most urgent issues, economic and social problems. But uh, still, we need not only these, t- these issues, were global issues and the local happened, but also we need uh, intellectual perspective yeah. to understand from w- what kind of the intellectual perspective, a kind of the, how the, the framework of the world view, these issues to be interpreted and to be understood. So that, I think, is a quite important. In order to have a real dialogue, that the trans, so-called a translingual dialogue, mm-hmm. or the dialogue between intellectuals from different the, the backgrounds, on the one hand, we need, we, obviously, we have the common interest or the, the, the issues that we are facing, but, but also we need a kind of the negotiation, communication about the, uh, these kind of intellectual level. Mm-hmm. So contribute to that, which means that in order to, uh, how to say, uh, the strengthen or the enhance the, the understanding, uh, the, the depths of the understanding. That's, mm-hmm. I think, it's a big challenge. I mean, this mm-hmm. is a real intellectual challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about it historically, in the field of philosophy, the notion of justice has been conceived of and, and pursued essentially in the national context. I mean, when the, the great philosophers of, of Western philosophies thinking about justice have been thinking about justice you know, at the national level. But today, you know, we cannot really think about economic justice, social justice, cultural justice simply at the national level. And very often our intellectual tools, our philosophical tools are not really globalized enough are not really based on dialogue among intellectual traditions, among cultural traditions. So there is a need for, for this, all these traditions to learn from one another and to know about one another. Yes, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's why, uh, actually, uh, we, we already had some discussions on these issues to uh, touch upon the, uh, the issue of global justice or the just social justice mm-hmm. from different intellectual uh, uh, backgrounds to see it's not only argue for the special particularity or the, uh, the, the speciality, but also we try to touch upon the, the universal issues from the uh, certain perspective, engaging the discussion in order to broaden or the deepen our understanding on these issues. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for example, uh, give you, uh, maybe it's uh, related to the issue of the global uh, justice. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, recently, I also wrote a very long paper on another inquiry on the, 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 the equality mm-hmm. of what? That's mm-hmm. the, uh, you know, Amartya Sen wrote the very famous piece yeah. mm-hmm. on the equality of what? Mm-hmm. Uh, that the, the I try to also address this issue from the Chinese intellectual history mm-hmm. to suggest some ideas or the philosophical ideas to understand what's the, the, the what's the meaning of the equality. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, for example, the generally speaking, we had the, the uh, in the in the Western intellectual history that uh, when the people talk about the equality in the modern intellectual tradition, mm-hmm. we can divide the two like, uh, for example, the, uh, the 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 equality of opportunities, right, mm-hmm. for the equal opportunities and more utilitarian tradition that uh, talk about the uh, equality. And uh, then you have a more or less social de- socialist or the social democratic approach mm-hmm. on the equality of, of, of the distribution, the justice of distribution issues, like uh, John Rawls and some mm-hmm. other the social democrats, more or less. They talk about these the division issues. Amartya Sen developed the idea of the equality of capability he argues necessity for the the the, the, equal, the, the capability issues, mm-hmm. and the, 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 for for the Chinese intellectual history, like uh, the very famous intellectuals and the philosopher in the late Qing and early Republican period, mm-hmm. Zhang Taiyan. You may know that uh, Zhang Bingling. He uh, was Lu Xun's teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lu Xun learned a lot from him, and he in a Almost the year before, just before the 1911 revolution, he published his uh, philosophical work, which was combined uh, the Taoist, Taoist thinking together with the uh, Buddhist thinking to develop the, the test reading uh, on the Zhuangzi, for example. Mm-hmm. He talked about the, the, uh, the, for example, the very philosophical uh, the essay by Zhuangzi is uh, the. the the equality of all things. He developed that idea to to touch upon the issue of the uh, difference and the equality. Mm-hmm. So the how can equal, uh, equality, not only the formal, but also to talk up with the respect to the differences mm-hmm. in the society and in the cosmos. So he talked about these kind of the issues, the equality issues with difference. So I think these kind of the idea was very important because different people, for example, the minority people, they are facing the issue of the unequal situation that the, the, they suffered from the divide between the urban and the rural, between the coast area and the inland area, between the poor and the rich as well as they suffered from the, the, the difficulties or the, the, the challenges to their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So how can combine the recognition or the respect for their lifestyle, that which was quite different from any others, but as well as have a kind of the real equality, enjoy the equality. So how can combine these two issues? I think that it's also related to global justice mm-hmm. and the different issues. Mm-hmm. So this is the, the idea that uh, they try to develop. It, it developed. Mm-hmm. It's obviously the very sophisticated and the difficult issues, but I think that the Chinese thinking is also can it's, it's also can contribute uh, a little bit, <laughs> maybe a, a lot of. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the, the the global discussion on this issue of justice. Mm-hmm. No, no, and precisely, you know, uh, as you know, at the UN, you know, we 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 have the six official languages: Chinese, French, uh, English, Russian, uh, Arabic, and and Spanish, and and. All UN websites are, are on these languages, and I, you know, I'm thinking, listening to you, that it could be a good idea to have, for instance, a, 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 a world a web, a world internet douche, in the context of which you know you would feature um, scholarship coming from uh, from Europe, from the US, from the Middle East, from Africa, from Asia, in a variety of languages. So it wouldn't be about translating but simply featuring and literally little by little inviting uh, scholars and audience to really discover uh, you know the different intellectual traditions and little by little having these traditions knowing about one another and, and entering into a dialogue yes I agree um, it definitely that's but it's very difficult because the, now the problem is still the translation issue. 
the, because most of the, the even for the Chinese scholars, where we can most of especially the, for the younger generation, they can speak English. Mm -hmm. So even when they find some interesting ideas or the inspiring ideas from Chinese intellectual history, that uh, easily to be translated into the the, the Western word, Western vocabulary. And uh, sometimes that translation it, it's a matter that it's necessary or the more read, readable to the Western audience. And uh, however, through this process of translation, some nuances also lost. Yes. So it is necessary to have uh, uh, the real dialogue on how can understand these very special uh, the, the ideas and the concepts and the words in its own context, and how can we convey the nuance of these ideas mm -hmm. together with the, the intellectual backgrounds in, for the different the, the audience with different the backgrounds. So that's the uh, real translingual practice. It's, 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 it's a, a very interesting but a very challenging task. Mm -hmm. Yes, because in a way, when you think about it, in the field of the humanities, in the field of the social sciences, all this body of knowledge is, uh, as I, you know, is highly nationalized. For instance, in France, when we study history, when we study literature, we first and foremost study French literature, French history. In the U.S., it's American history, American literature, and in China, it's essentially Chinese. Li well, it's a bit different because, but I mean, you know, how do we globalize our mind? How do we globalize our knowledge while having a, a, a national identity, too? Yes. Uh, that's the, uh, there were different approaches, of course. The first of all, people uh, need to learn from others, right? Mm -hmm. Even the, uh, you know, in China, if you visit any Chinese bookstore, you find a massive translation box compared to if you visit any European countries. It's yeah. difficult to find the same phenomena that a massive translation from China or other non-Western countries into Western mm -hmm. languages. So mm -hmm. this is the, the one situation. That's also mm -hmm. the unequal intellectual situation. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's, we need to find the way to uh, create a new paradigm for the understanding of our, of, uh, our uh, history, go beyond the national history, that the national literature, national intellectual history, any kind of the history. Most of, most of the historical narrative in the 19th century, century were national history. That's the, yes. uh, the paradigm. We need mm -hmm. to find the way to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so while you were an editor at Dushu, you, you continued to, to write a lot on, 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 uh, on, on contemporary issues. I have here two of your books, uh, China's New Order and also The End of the of the revolution, and, and, and it seems to me that uh, the kind of critical uh, analysis that you do of, uh, of the world and of ch China is very much uh, based upon your uh, intellectual history of Chinese thought, your, your full volume. So first of all, why did you feel that it was important to spend 10 years of your life writing this, uh, these four volumes on, on, on Chinese intellectual thought? And what are the key ideas or the key questions that you were trying to address in this Chinese uh, history of intellectual thought? Uh, the, the first question that uh, we, when we talk about the contemporary issues, Mm -hmm. It's uh, like uh, the, the new liberalism or the social equ inequality, social differentiation. All these issues were not only the, the Chinese pheno phenomena, but the global phenomena. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, on the one hand, you need to address it from a Chinese context, mm -hmm. but in order to have a broad, it's on a real understanding to find the way to break through uh, that, the, the, the difficulties, you have to put it into the global context. Otherwise, it's difficult. The, the old understanding was limited. I, so that's why the, my, uh, I, I myself still focus on the issues, Chinese issues. But uh, the, what I tried is try to 
uh, studied from a much more broader perspective, regional perspective, Chinese perspective, local perspective, and a global perspective to make them together. This is the one, uh, the, 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 the approach for touching upon the uh, contemporary issues. As you said that I also try to touch upon these issues from a more historical perspective. In that way, it's really had an interaction between my historical studies and the con engagements in, in the contemporary issues. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, it's difficult to summarize the four volumes of mm -hmm. my book. But generally speaking, we I try to, uh, the first of all, we try to reshape or the, the create the new pattern or the paradigm for the, for the study of China or the Chinese intellectual history. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's not, my history, it, the, the, when we talk about the rise of modern Chinese thought, is obviously still talk about the uh, Chinese thought. It's not only talk about the uh, interaction, like uh, between Chinese thinking and the Western thinking, Indian thinking, or other intellectual traditions, how those elements from outside became the uh, integrated part of the, the Chinese thinking. So in that way, the Chinese thinking is not only the Chinese, but also uh, the, the different kind of the components. Mm -hmm. This is the only one way. And at the same time, I try to break through uh, to, to, to get rid of the, 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 the national framework. Mm -hmm. So that's why the one of topic that, uh, to, that uh, try to do some more or less com uh, comparative the imperial uh, experience, uh, the early history, like uh, uh, in the Manchu Empire, Qing Dynasty, Mongolian Empire, and uh, together with like uh, the Ottoman or some European uh, early history. So we try to do some comparative history, that, but that the comparison was not in a frame, framework of the uh, the traditional comparative literature was mm -hmm. still based on the uh, national literature or national history. Mm -hmm. We tried to change the, the, that, the, the paradigm. Mm -hmm. So the, the first of all, the, one of the issues is to rethink about the, the uh, dichotomy of the empire and the nation state. Mm -hmm. And also we talk about the early the history because uh, the, to, to re-examine the the, uh, the the intellectual legacy. For example, um, in the 20th century, uh, Kyoto School, the Japanese scholars elaborate a framework of the Chinese history. They they, they talk about the so-called early modern in the Chinese history, started from the Song Dynasty. That started from 10th century. They talk about the early modern in the East Asia started from 10th century Song Dynasty in China and the 14th century uh, Li Dynasty in, in the Korea Peninsula and uh, Tokugawa Japan that, uh, the, in the 17th century. So that kind of the historical studies touch upon a lot of the issues, the, the format uh, of the, uh, the, the state structure and a certain kind of the early proto-nationalism or the, uh, the, the centralized the, 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 the uh, centralized administration structure and the, the national examination systems, and uh, together with the long distance trade and the so on so forth, how that kind of the elements Im emerged in this region. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, that kind of the narration was shaped by the Western teleological narrative of modernity. But mm -hmm. uh, we, on the one hand, we have to have a uh, reflexive perspective on this. But on the other hand, we have to, to, to look, at the, look into the history to have a com, to construct a comparative uh, uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, the last week, uh, I was in Berlin mm -hmm. um, uh, for a panel discussion together with uh, the, uh, the Frederick Cooper and the Jane uh, uh, Beer Bank, uh, and uh, the Carlo Ginsberg. You, you, you may know that the Carlo Ginsberg was yes, a very yes. famous Italian, Italian historian. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Fred Cooper uh, is a specialist in the uh, African colonial, 
colonial history of Africa. And also, Bill, Bill Bank uh, is a historian of Russia. And uh, they jointly, uh, the, the, uh, the Bear Bank and the, the uh, Cooper jointly publish a, uh, a book entitled the, the Empires in World History that uh, try to not study the from nation state, but try to, to study the from the early imperial uh, experience to under, re, under, reinterpret the world history. That kind of the discussion actually started from the uh, uh, early uh, uh, discussion uh, I myself engaged in more than 10 years ago. For example, my writings in the uh, 90s actually uh, to the great extent was about the early history, that uh, the, the imperial experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in the 2000 and the 2001, I was in. I was a fellow at the, the Wissenschaft Kolleg to Berlin, the okay. Institute for Advanced Studies in Berlin, together with a group of historians from different backgrounds. For example, the Mozava Alem. He he is a specialist in Mughal Empire, and Sanjay Subramanian. He's a, the, the historian of colonial history, the Portuguese and the Spanish colonial history in Asia and some others on Ottoman, on Russia, on German empires. So we had a group of discussion on the empire, the, the, the empires in world history. So we, I'm glad to see that the, these kind of discussion and intellectual uh, projects developed, not only among the, uh, the, the Chinese or the some non-Western uh, historians, but also a lot of the uh, Western scholars engage in these debates, partly because these kind of the historical studies reflected also related to the issues like in the Europe, you have the EU projects. It's more or less it's, uh, like an empire building. It's not the old empire, however, it's not the nation state. It's not mm -hmm. the study of um, uh, national history. So we talk about the regional integration and the global history. So it's the historical experience were revisited. And uh, it's not, cannot be simply applied the, early, uh, the historical studies into the contemporary. However, we always can learn something from our uh, historical studies in order to understand the new situation we are facing. So that's I. I think it's uh, the, our uh, the, the con uh, intellectual concern. Yeah. And, and so, w w so in fact, when you do intellectual history, you are very much interested in the uh, relation or in the interaction between uh, ideas and the kind of political and economic uh, context in which these ideas emerge, how they are shaped by this context, and how they shape this context. Yes. Yes, that's true. Um, because the uh, the that's the started from my own uh, reflection on the uh, our own uh, intellectual or the condition of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because uh, since we are now trained in the universities within certain disciplines, we take for the taxonomy or the division of disciplines for granted. Mm -hmm. However, these Ideas, for example, the the history, the the, the term in Chinese is the Li Shi, or the Shi, mm -hmm. is a history. However, the history is not the, for the for the Confucian thinking. For example, the history is not only the the uh, the, the history, historical record, historiography, but historical itself as certain kind of political, ritual, and uh, the value. Uh, it's a very special category. It's when we talk about the history. If you look at the, if you had the uh, uh, know the skills or the format of Chinese historiography, you understand that the, any change to that formation of historiography means a lot in the political, ethical, and the, the uh, and the, uh, intellectual change. Mm -hmm. So the term you cannot be reduced. The, the history into the more or less positivist the approach 
for the historical studies, but also to find the, the, the significance of that of the category in our historical and intellectual discourse. Mm -hmm. Not only for these and some others, we know that, uh, for example, uh, another uh, that uh, the category now became very a lot of people uh, engage in the discussion and uh, find it used sometimes to some extent uh, useful. For example, the Chinese term uh, "tianxia." Uh, Tianxia means all under the heaven, and uh, when they talk about the global history, the mm -hmm. global, and the people talk about the Tianxia, but the Tianxia means something. It's not only uh, like in the in the contemporary use of the the global uh, the meaning, but also contain some reflection on our the living situation mm -hmm. and also contain uh, some philosophy inside of it. Mm -hmm. So it is necessary. To, on the one hand, you cannot simply universalize all these ideas, but read it into the historical context. But mm -hmm. at the same time, try to learn some universal implication from mm -hmm. these historicization of this history mm -hmm. in the uh, certain context. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, what I my way to, uh, on the one hand, uh, to raise the, the ideas into the, uh, uh, the historical uh, context, mm -hmm. but not reduce that ideas as a, only the functional way, mm -hmm. but, but, but also try to, because the ideas always mean some constructive the mm -hmm. factor. It's not only the idea, it's a historical, political, intellectual forces mm -hmm. to in in the creating in, in the creation of certain kind of the uh, their the, the social reality so mm -hmm. in this way the certain kind of interaction between the on the interpretation of ideas and the talk about the, the uh, political social economic uh, culture and especially the ritual practice mm -hmm. were important this kind of interaction was very important. Uh, so, in fact, you know, you, 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 uh, what you are saying is that uh, the way you, you conceive uh, uh, intellectual history is, is, is a way through which you have to understand, you know, how these ideas, this intellectual history is produced and organized in concrete terms, otherwise your understanding of these notions is very abstract, and in fact you cannot really translate them from one culture to another because you don't know what you are talking about if you, if you do not understand the, 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 the context in which they are produced and organized, right? Yes. Yes, I think so. Because it's, uh, it's, uh, we need to avoid the reductionism mm -hmm. in the either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so precisely, you know, when just to go back to contemporary issues, um, you know, it's interesting because you, in your in your work, for instance, on on, on contemporary China, the, the book China's New Order, uh, you are quite critical uh, of uh, how uh, development has taken place in China. Most of the people in, in the West, you know, are constantly focusing on the fact that uh, uh, since 1978, so millions, so many millions of people have. Uh, have have uh, have been um, uh, have left poverty because of development policies. But in your in your work, you also stress the the, the negative dimensions of uh, the development policies in connection sure. with your analysis of globalization. Yes, that's true. Um, obviously, the uh, my interpretation actually it can be. Uh, maybe I should uh, summarize that into the different levels. First mm -hmm. of all, uh, my, criti my critique of these issues would not necessarily mean that they uh, are purely uh, negative to the developments, because mm -hmm. the developments, economic, even the economic growth, is some achievements based mm -hmm. on historical legacy. That the legacy, the, uh, including the, the the, the historical, more historic pre-20th century legacy, and also the 20th century legacy. So it's, I, it's not that this, and also the, a lot of the uh, very important uh, policies that issued during the reform era. So it's not a pure critique of it, not a purely negation of that. Mm -hmm. 
But on the other hand, following this process, I, especially in the late 90s, that the late 90s we perceived a process, a process towards the direction of the new liberalism. So I I I, I criticize that the, the, the basic uh, the the, the uh, crisis, the mainly focus on the social uh, division, that the widening of the uh, gap between poor and rich, between urban and rural, between coastal area and the inland area, uh, mm -hmm. together with the uh, very serious uh, mm -hmm. crisis of environment issues. So uh, all these issues will need to be uh, uh, reflected mm -hmm. upon. So mm -hmm. kind of I'm, this is a critique, is a critique of the, uh, that new liberal pattern of developmentalism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and also a notion which is very, very central on, in your work, and, and actually, in fact, it started with your work on Lucian, and, and it's part of your work on, on contemporary China, on, on the state of the world, is the notion of modernity. So why is the notion of modernity and the different aspects of modernity in China, why is it so, so central to your intellectual thinking, to your political critique? Uh, of 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 the you know of of the era. Why is it so important? Modernity in your thinking. Um, that needs to be. Uh, it's because the modernity issue is uh, a very broad issue, and uh, even now a lot of the intellectuals, the scholars, uh, argue that it's difficult to give uh, uh, the, the clear uh, definition of this concept. Or uh, maybe we need to. Uh, forget about it. Mm -hmm. However, uh, in the context, in the, in the, for example, 90s, partly because these, uh, the developmentalism based on the ideology of teleological idea of the modernity. So my use of the category of, 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 of modernity based on a reflexive perspective. It's not mm -hmm. simply treat the, the modernity as a telos, of our uh, 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 the, the narration, but try to to have a, argue for the necessity for the reflection on the modernity itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, because uh, basically the development, uh, economic growth, on on the one hand give us a lot of things, but at the same time is uh, sometimes is a very serious challenge. Well, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that was because the uh, modernity gave, became a kind of the ideology mm -hmm. for the whole so the, 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 the society. Which so that's necessary to understand it. So this is from the more reflexive uh, perspective. But on the other hand, we also need to think about the uh, 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 the, the issue of modernity together with the issue of the, uh, the, the 20th century China. Mm -hmm. Because basically, after the Cultural Revolution, uh, the dominant ideology or the ideological uh, the issue is the total negation of Cultural Revolution, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's not only the negation of Cultural Revolution, but also the negation of the 20th century revolutionary history, mm -hmm. the socialist history. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if we negated that. On the one hand, we negated that history, but on the other hand, we are really in illusion uh, for the modernity, for example. We actually, uh, we couldn't understand the nature of the modern history, that uh, what's the, 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 the socialist, what socialist agenda, what's the revolutionary agenda. Mm. So, because the early Either the Republican Revolution or the uh, and, and the Communist Revolution in the 20th century are part of the, the modern project. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, we, we when we pursue our own goals uh, under the, the how to say the the, the ideology modern ide ideology, we we thought that the modernity is our telos. But on the other hand, we treat the, our 20th century not as a modern history, but also like a feudal, traditional, and so on and so forth. 
So I'm trying to highlight on the, uh, the, the, the continuity within the rupture between the, the different episodes from the 20th century down to now, that the, there was certain kind of a continuity there. And obviously, that the modernity was the, the issue. So on the one hand, it's highlighted the necessity of the uh, critical reflection on modernity. But on the other hand, we need to understand our early history that as a modern history, rather than simply in the dichotomy tradition and the modern, we thought that the whole early history was a, was a, 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 a traditional uh, episode. Like uh, in the 1980s, you know that in the 1980s, in China, we had an intellectual enlightenment. Mm -hmm. We thought that the, the socialism and the 20th century uh, revolution simply uh, still the part of the so-called the feudalistic, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, under the feudalistic impact, try to, uh, um, how to say, avoid the nature of its modern. So mm -hmm. this is a modernity thing that immune from our re reflection. So when I use it, was I when I use the term of modernity, it's not started from a teleological way mm -hmm. to talk about the, the uh, telos, the, the modernity as our telos. I try to see that uh, how more historical understanding of it. Yeah. And perhaps as a way to, to, to end our conversation, because I know that uh, uh, you, you have quite a bit of things to do and I don't want to keep you uh, too late, uh, as you know now, uh, China is really uh, a global power. So, and, and for the moment, it's mainly because of its economic impact. So, d d Do you think that at one point, China is going to be also a, a global political actor? And, and in your view, what kind of uh, global political actor is China going to be? And do you feel that uh, there are some uh, Chinese values, Chinese principles coming from Chinese philosophy, which are going to become part of the uh, international public discourse in terms of global justice, in terms of uh, international law, and so on? Yeah. I think that uh, China, obviously, uh, is a global uh, political force now. And even not only now, but uh, from the quite long history, historical mm -hmm. background, China has been a global uh, political force, but uh, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding, for example, uh, the, 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 the PRC actually during the Cold War time uh, was a very important force for the uh, change of the, uh, uh, the Cold War structure. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, the, the after the uh, establishment of the PRC, China had a war in Korean Peninsula with America mm -hmm. and in the West. And, but in the late 50s, China has a public debate with the Soviet Union, and uh, which led to the conflict, military conflicts later. Mm -hmm. However, in these process the, the, the bipolar structure of Cold War gradually changed because in the mid, for example, the Bandung Conference, because of Chinese engagement with the Third World, the Third World politics, I think China did play some role in the deconstruction of the bipolar structure of the Cold War. In that sense, still played, and also you know that the, uh, the, the, the Cultural Revolution was thought as a catastrophe in China, but, but at the same time played a certain role in the 1968 student moments in the West and in other places. So these kind of interactions showed that the China was a political force in the global scenario. At the same time now, China is changed a, a, a lot. Uh, um, for example, in Africa, obviously, uh, besides the Euro Europe and uh, America, China, India, and other big so-called uh, emerging economies played more and more roles. It's also had a positive and a negative side. Positive sides, 
for African countries, they had the certain kind of the competition in that area. That gave the space for the, uh, the, the African countries for the selection or the, for some other the possibilities. But on the other hand, China, following China, India, the, the people concerned about the weather or not, uh, China and India, Brazil, uh, or other new uh, economic, uh, uh, new economies, can really uh, avoid the old pattern that the, the, the America and the Euro European colonialism did to these continents. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a crucial for the, 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 the real discussion on mm -hmm. these issues, because the, these are the new global situation. And uh, you know, for example, last January, I was in the, uh, the Senegal for, mm -hmm. in the, the World Social Forum. And uh, you know that the World Social Forum was established in a certain kind of the atmosphere for the nostalgia for the Bandung Conference. The Bandung Conference was the, uh, the Asian-African Conference Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, but now it's the Asian and African relationship is changed tremendously cha transformed. Now the people talked about the, uh, the Asian, Asia in Africa, for example. Mm -hmm. So global justice need to be addressed on these kind of the issues too. Mm -hmm. And for Chinese intellectuals and for the, 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 the other Chinese intellectuals, on the one hand, that the following these developments, we need to rethink about the, 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 our own uh, legacy. For example, mm -hmm. the 20th century, Chinese internationalism, that the internationalism as a legacy, how can we learn from that legacy to, to, to contribute to the global justice. Mm -hmm. And also, not only for these 20th century legacy, but also the early legacies, how can we learn from that uh, the uh, global justice, as I said, that the, the equality with difference, respect the difference, but at the same time, how can we match that the, the, the idea for the difference, respect for difference, but, but at the same time, at the, uh, based on that, establish the, the, the more equal relations. Mm -hmm. This is a big challenge. So the, we can learn from our history, but the history cannot resolve everything. The mm -hmm. most important thing that the, the studying from history is, in, is for the creation of the new ideas, new patterns. So that's mm -hmm. uh, the in that sense, uh, although the Chinese ideas, the Chinese intellectual tradition, will contribute a lot to this rethinking, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the dialogues and uh, the, together with the intellectuals from all the world, mm -hmm. not only the, from the West, mm -hmm. and uh, from, from my uh, idea, it's especially important to, to have a real dialogue between among the intellectuals, uh, the, the, like uh, from African countries, from mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, Seneca, or South Africa, and uh, together with other Latin American and Asian countries, were uh, uh, very urgently needed. Mm -hmm. And, and so perhaps, uh, Professor Wang, as a way to end our conversation, what are the uh, issues on which you are working now? What are the, the uh, questions on which you, you focus? Yes, um, I'm actually working on different, some uh, projects. So one of the issues that I'm working on, the, uh, uh, the issue of equality. Mm -hmm. the, the, how can I elaborate the idea of another inquiry of equality? This is one issue. And the second, together with the issue, I'm, talk about, I'm also uh, rethink about the uh, 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 social form of democracy and the, the crisis of because I think that the, there was real crisis of the traditional pattern. Uh, that's uh, like uh, for the political system. Uh, I think that the, uh, the, the core of the democracy, that because we are still talking about the democracy in China, and what kind of the format of the, uh, the, the party politics was in crisis, and the public sphere, especially the media, was broadly 
uh, thought as uh, not on the one hand uh, the, the media as a public space is crucial for the democracy, but on the other hand now the media was really uh, a space uh, problematic. A lot of people, you know, that uh, recently what happened in uh, Britain, that yes. the, 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 the news of the world is mm -hmm. in crisis. Not only for this, um, everywhere in China, in America, in many places, we talk about in Italy, that the, the media in crisis too. So the party politics, public space, and also what's the condition for China, that the, the, the condition of the rule of law, because we thought that the, the rule of law was a very important issue for the improvements. However, what kind of political culture can make the rule of law really effective this is a real discussion now. It still happened among the Chinese intellectuals. Mm -hmm. So all these issues I try to working on in the two levels. On the one level is a more political, social, theoretical thinking about this, mm -hmm. uh, together with some uh, 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 the case studies. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I try to uh, 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 working the historical studies too. Um, now I'm focused on the, uh, uh, the, the reconsideration of 20th century in China. Because my early work, the, the rise of modern Chinese thought, generally speaking, which was end in, the, in the, uh, the, the early 20th century, uh, it's mainly the, the long history from the early Chinese historical thought and down to the early republic. Now I think it's become urgent to re reflect or to re rethink the, the, uh, the position and the implication of the 20th century. Because the 20th century, generally speaking, is a revolutionary century, full of turmoils and a lot of the problems. But also, a lot of the innovation and the creation emerged in this uh, the, 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 the period. So how can we reevaluate evaluate that the history was very important uh, that uh, because broadly speaking uh, the, the people thought that the the, uh, the reform was a rupture from that history but is it true uh, is it what's the continuity what's the rupture uh, between that the 20th century history and the reform so that I think that uh, quite important for this